Good afternoon, guys. James from Junkyard Fox here, and we have ourselves an outdoor arena review today. That'll be on the Battle Horse Knives Woodsman Pro Blade, right here. An American made, handcrafted bushcraft knife. The overall length is slightly less than nine inches. The cutting edge is slightly over three inches. It is 01 tool steel, 532 inch thick, Scandinavian grind. And the handle itself, the scales, are green micarta scales with a single twist to them with a leather sheath. And I actually really like this sheath as well, too. I like a very basic sheath. I don't even like a bare rod loop on my sheaths. So this works very well for me. So it's a leather hand-stitched sheath right here. It comes with a drainage hole. So that's really a, a good eye on attention for attention. It comes with a dangler system. I understand a lot of guys like dangler system. In case you're like me and you prefer to just have it on your hip, carry a knife on your hip, you can just wedge your belt down here and it'll hold. So, really good little simple but good sheath. So let's talk about this knife for a minute. So it's a bushcraft knife. So let's go ahead and go out here and do some bushcraft activities. Now, I live in the American Southwest. It is desert out here, guys. So. When I talk about bushcraft activities or projects, they're not the stuff you're normally used to. I'm not working with birch bark and poplar trees because they don't exist out here. This is a very different environment with different flora and fauna. That being said, what I'm gonna do this is a prickly pear cactus pad. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to improvise a cactus container from this. So let's play the what if game and say that all I have with me, I went out to the wilderness for whatever reason. I, you know, I really slacked it. I, I ended up losing my equipment and all I have was the blade that I have on my belt and the ferro rod that I always carry around my neck beneath my shirt. So this is all I have and I'm trying to, I'm trying to survive. So I found a stream nearby. I want to drink that water. Now, if I was hours away from dying of thirst, I would take my chances and I would be, I would jump on that stream and chug it like a 40. But if I can keep my wits about me and I still have time, I'd rather play it safe and not be lost and sick. And I'm going to improvise a container where I could boil some water, make it safe to drink, and then t take my time and do that. I gotta be careful because these things are a nuisance to get off once they get you. You can see the fibers there. So, for anyone who's had that question, I, I hear that often, you know, that um, the 90 degree spine on a knife is important for striking a ferro rod or for wooden shavings, say fatwood, but they don't know what else that can come in handy. This is a perfect example of why a 90 degree spine comes in handy. Scraping off thorns. There's still a little bit of hairs, but I'm gonna have the fire just burn them off. So let's go ahead and get a fire started. So you know there's a million reasons to have a fire in a survival situation, whether you're trying to clean your water or signal for help. So I got this small little log of mesquite that is a tree native to my environment. I'm gonna make a wood stick fire. And guys, this is a this is a Scandinavian knife, a Scandinavian grind knife. So you know this is there's not there's gonna be zero issues with batoning. Of course, it excelled.
that and I've actually come to realize that the 90 degree spine isn't as sharp as I wish it was it, it's, it's a bit rounded so I'm thinking it's just my model that I have now um, this model was originally used by a member of the outdoor arena that is no longer with us he left and when he decided to drop out of the outdoor arena uh, the knives were sent back to BHK and they got fixed up they got polished up sharpened before they were sent to the rest of the members I am the next member after that so right before me BHK polished them up and I'm thinking at some point during that polishing process maybe that spine got a little bit too rounded out because maybe too polished because it's giving me a serious pain in the butt right now <laughs> well guys I couldn't get a one stick fire going with this blade so I just improvised a quick tinder bundle and it's so fluffy I mean a lot of material out here is very fluffy so any little spark will really catch this so this even with the spine, that's I'm gonna have to give it a fail. I'm fairly certain it can catch this, get this going. There we go. Okay, we got this fire going. Right before we hollow this out, I got three rocks that I just found from around here. I'm gonna place them in the fire because I want them nice and hot, and you'll see why later. Okay, so back to the Woodsman Pro. Problem. I have no doubt that this is going to work well when it comes to carving. It did give me some issues with the spine and the handle after a while does get uncomfortable to a degree, at least to my hands. But let's get this, let's get this container going. Up. This was originally growing up like this, naturally. So the bottom part that I cut off, that's what we're going to turn it upside down. I sliced it as even as I could. Of course, it's not an exact science, but it's good enough. So from here, I'm going to slice in here and go slow. Okay, guys, now this is the tricky part when it comes to doing this. You don't want to get careless. You don't want to get restless. Take your time, because if you puncture this, you're starting all over. And you just wasted your time, and you wasted your energy. So just go slow. And what I like is this is a very large pad. I mean, this is a, almost abnormally large. So normally, I would hollow out pieces like this. And this is edible, by the way, guys. This, this is edible. It was eaten by the Indians. It is a very popular meal in Mexico. So it, I can eat that, plenty of antioxidants, plenty of fiber, vitamin A. But for now, just trying to hollow this out. Obviously the, most, the more water you hold, the more you can drink. So you wanna make it enough where it holds a good amount of water, but you don't wanna overdo it. The more time your blade is spent in here, the higher the chances that you're just gonna mess things up. So. Don't get too careless. Don't get too frustrated with it. Take your time. Carve it out. From here, the blade did well, by the way. I don't know if you caught that, but it's slicing off little chunks and it's thin enough. See how this is thin out? It's thin here and then it widens out. That's really good for this kind of situation. There we go. This one's even better. Okay, so, we have this wedged open. Okay, so this is the, basically the way it's gonna work. Now let's go ahead and get some, uh, let's go ahead and get a stream and fill up some water. Okay, so here's the stream, guys. Here's my container. Let's fill it up.
Now that here's where the test begins. See if we see any puncture holes. Now there's gonna be a little bit of dripping, obviously, since I just dipped it in water. But to see if we see any on the skin, any any cut where water is leaking out. So far, so good. Okay, so as you can see right here, we placed our cactus container right next to the fire. And I'm using the top of it to just cover it because we have a lot of wind, so I don't want dirt and sand and whatever getting in there. That kind of defeats the purpose of cleaning your water. We got our fire, I'm stoking the fire going. I also have these rocks. I don't know if you remember earlier, we said we were gonna put some rocks here. I want them very hot. I want them scalding hot because we're gonna throw them in this container so we can get that fire going. Now I can put this container close to my fire but it is no stainless steel container, so I can't just put it right on the flames. Eventually, it's gonna start burning. My water's gonna start leaking. That defeats the purpose. So, I have it close enough to start getting some heat going, but not too close where it starts burning it away. So, just keep it here. Let these rocks get nice and hot. And in about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, I'm gonna get these rocks and place them into my container. And then we have some drinking water. Okay, so we let the fire get nice and hot we let the rocks get nice and hot let's remove this lid because if you're gonna do this and wait for this to boil with the fire only you're gonna be here forever so let's see if I can get this going ah. fire is actually very hot now here we go And those three hot rocks to this amount of water should be pretty good, as you can tell. Did you hear it? You can see some heat coming from this rock right here. Okay, so once again, in a desert environment, if you had to improvise, you can use a cactus pad, hollow it out, and you have yourself a little makeshift container. Actually, no, kind of careful. It, it may be too hot. Right now. Let's see, give it a try. One time. But I get the job done. It's kind of like cactus tea at this point. <laughs> okay, so we got some water going as well as I got some nutrition from the cactus itself. Now, it's not gonna taste too nice, too delicious right now because it's just there next to the fire. You can take this home and, you know, when you mix it with beef and some chili, it's gonna be tasting great. Now it's not gonna be so tasty, but you'll take what you can get if you are in a survival situation. So, I'm gonna eat that. I also have some water. Now, I did take a good swig of it. I was quite thirsty earlier, so. But if you notice, I still have some water. And I still got about half of it. So I'm gonna take a swig of this. And I got some warmth from the fire. So if this was a survival situation, I'm not doing too bad. I got some fire for warmth, for signaling. I also got a container here to boil some water. And I got a little bit of food. So not too bad. So, final thoughts on the BHK Woodsman Pro. The blade itself did very well. It is a spectacular blade, especially with that 01 tool steel. It performed admirably. You saw me baton, you saw me feather stick, you saw me hollow out that cactus. It did well. The spine, not so well. It is a little bit too rounded. Now, like I said, I did do my homework and I saw other reviews on this blade and no one had an issue but me. So I'm certain it's just this particular blade that's a little bit too smoothed out. Now, if you own this knife, you could just file this down, you know, with the file, and it'll it'll take care of that problem. So that's one thing. The handle itself also was quite uncomfortable. Now, the beauty of that is these are removable scales. You can just 
get some different scales at BHK Knives. So if this contouring isn't for you, like I will say after prolonged use, it's not really for me. I don't know if you can catch that, but my hands are a little bit red over here and towards my fingers from prolonged use. But other than that, the knife worked well. So if it was up to me, I would change the handles and I'd, I'd be sure, I'm sure that BHK is gonna take care of the spine. And you're gonna have a 90 degree spine, as you saw its uses today, and it'll be a good knife. So this knife is 175, handmade, uh, hand, hand, I'm sorry, handcrafted, American-made knife. Okay, it's not perfect as of right now, but it can be perfect. We just gotta fix these things, and that's the beauty of reviews. We test them out, out in the field, different environments, and then that's where they get the feedback at BHK, and they can make it better. So, it was a good knife. Not perfect, but it was good. Okay, guys, well, that's the conclusion of this video. Now, if you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't to keep up with my videos and my adventures. I'm going to send this blade out to another member of the outdoor arena, and they're going to test it out in their environment with their own tests. So, I'll see you guys next week with another video. Now, go outside and get your boots dirty.